first of all i would like to wish balu sir a very happy birthday and i would like to thank shauli ma'am for giving me this opportunity to give a talk here so today uh, i'll be talking about extreme values of l functions of new forms thanks to mrutin jai i won't have to introduce a lot of notations so we start with a hecke eigen form of weight k and level 1 and i'll be only talking about cuspidal hecke eigen forms so the l function attached to f is defined as sum from 1 to infinity lambda fn into the s where my lambda fn's are normalized fourier coefficients of f so my uh, and this function has an analytic continuation to the whole complex plane and it satisfies a functional equation which relates its values at s to values at 1 minus s because i'm taking normalized fourier coefficients now uh, so we are interested in the value of this l function at the central critical point half it is known that l half of f is always greater than or equal to 0 so it is natural to ask when is this, is this value positive when k is congruent to 2 modulo 4 the functional equation implies that l half f has to be equal to 0 in the other case the only remaining case which is k congruent to 0 modulo 4 it is expected that l half f is non zero so let me state some results which we know in this direction let hk denote the set of all normalized hecke eigen forms of weight k and level 1 then conan showed in 1980 that the number of such normalized hecke eigen forms of weight k and level 1 such that l half f is non zero is greater than greater than root k he proved this result using the theory of half integer weight modular forms and comparing dimensions of some subspaces of the space of cusp forms this result was improved by lao and zhang in 2005 where they computed the first and second moments of these l functions and showed that the number of such hecke eigen forms of weight k and level 1 such that l half f is non zero is greater than greater than k by log k square finally in 2015 luo used the method of mollifiers and computed the first and second mollified moments of these l functions and showed that this number the cardinality of this set is greater than greater than k which is the optimal bound so once we know that these many uh, hecke eigen forms are there for which the value is non vanishing we would like to know what is the bound on these values in this direction the best known result is by frolenkov where he showed that l half f is less than less than k to the 1 by 3 times log k to the 13 by 6 however this is far from the expected bound in fact we know under grh that there exists a positive constant a such that l half f takes values less than less than exponential of a log k 
by log log k. So naturally one would ask if this bound is optimal or not. This question was answered by Soundarajan in 2008. He introduced the resonance method and showed that the number of Hecke eigenforms of weight k and level 1 such that L half f takes values greater than or equal to square uh, 1 plus little of 1 times square root of 2 log k by log log k is uh, sorry, he showed that for k congruent to 0 modulo 4, there exists a Hecke eigenform of weight k and level 1 such that L half f takes values bigger than exponential of 1 plus little of 1. times square root of 2 log k by log log k. So one would naturally ask, how often does this happen? And this was the motivation of our recent work with Shaoli Gun. And this is now published online in Bulletin of London Math Society, where we show that If SK is the set of all Hecke eigenforms of weight k and level 1, such that L half of f takes values bigger than exponential of 1.41 times square root of log k by log log k, then the cardinality of this set is greater than greater than k to the 1 minus epsilon for any epsilon positive. In fact, we have an explicit lower bound here for this the, for the cardinality of this set of the form k by a function of k and this bound is optimal in the sense that the denominator function f of uh, function of k cannot be replaced by any power of any fixed power of log k. Okay. Now Sorry, which? Yes. Ha, huh, this A. It should be greater than one third, you say. I'm just saying there exists some constant. A. No, here you have k to the one by three also. Here you don't have that. Okay, uh, yeah. So it will be A by log log k. A by log log k, log log k. So one can again ask this question that what can you say about values of L functions attached to quadratic twists of f? So there are two ways to look at this question. Either you can fix a Hecke eigenform f and ask how many fundamental discriminants are there such that L half f tensor chi d does not vanish or you can fix a fundamental discriminant d and ask how many Hecke eigenforms are there such that L half f tensor chi d does not vanish. The first question is related to Wolfel's conjecture and in that direction uh, the results about extremal values of those L half f tensor chi d were uh, looked at by Hofstein and Lockhart. What we are interested in this talk is the second uh, case where you fix a fundamental discriminant d and look at how many Hecke eigenforms are there for which it takes large values. In lieu of time, I'm not mentioning the results about non-vanishing. I'll directly go to the uh, extremal uh, case of uh, extremal values. And in this direction, there were no prior results known before this. So let me first fix some notations. Let HKQ 
Jira set of all normalized Hecke eigenforms. of weight k and level q and let p k q be the set of all normalized Hecke eigenforms of weight k and level divided. Then We could show that uh, for an even integer k and be an odd fundamental discriminant, such that minus 1 to the k by 2 times d is positive. If you take s k d to be the set of all normalized Hecke eigenforms of weight k and level dividing mod d such that l half f tensor chi d takes values greater than or equal to number then for any epsilon positive the cardinality of this set is greater than greater than k to the 1 minus epsilon and this bound is also expected to be the best possible and under uh, Keating state conjectures we know that the k to the epsilon in the denominator cannot be replaced by any fixed power of log k. Okay, uh, in the remaining time, I will quickly give an application of our result in the theory of half integer weight modular forms. So, by Shimura correspondence, we know that for a Hecke eigenform in the Conan plus space, there is an associated Hecke eigenform in the integer weight case and Wolfsburger's formula tells us that the mod d Fourier coefficient of g is related to the value of ls f tensor chi d at half. So using Wolfsburger's formula, so this is by Wolfsburger's formula and this is by Shimura correspondence. So, using Wolfsburger's formula in our result, we could show that for an even integer k and d an odd fundamental discriminant satisfying minus 1 to the k by 2 times d greater than 0. The number of Hecke eigenforms in Conan plus space such that okay, let me not write like this. Such that the norm of G is 1 and mod d Fourier coefficient of G takes values bigger than this number. is greater than greater than k to the 1 minus epsilon. 
In this direction also, one can ask the question that what if we fix a Hecke eigenform G and vary over fundamental discriminants G, can we say something about how many Fourier coefficients are large? The answer is yes, and this question was answered recently by Gun Konen and Sound. But the, the point here is that in our result, we can fix a fundamental discriminant D and say that for these many Hecke eigenforms in the Konen plus space, the mod D Fourier coefficient takes such large values. In particular, we can say that for these many Hecke eigenforms in Konen plus space, the first Fourier coefficient takes such large values, which answers the question of Shimura about the behavior of these Fourier coefficients. And I would like to stop here. Thank you. Okay. There is uh, one small remark. I would like to conclude with that. So uh, I found that there are results on extremal values of zeta half plus it on which Balu sir has worked with Ramchandra sir. So I believe this talk uh, is a suitable for this and I would dedicate it to him. <laughs> so, thank you. One point forty-one is a precise number. No. Or any number, which any number less than square root two. two. Yes. Any number square less than square root two. I just needed a number less than one uh, square root of two, so I took that.